There are intense diplomatic negotiations taking place right now about Lebanon. Israel has a clear demand. If Israel leaves Lebanon and Hezbollah reestablishes itself on Israel's border, Israel must have a guaranteed freedom of action in Lebanon in order to remove the threat. If the Hezbollah threat returns, then Israel needs to return. That's what Israel's defense minister said Israel needs for any future agreement on Lebanon. He said, Israel demands the right to independently enforce and act against any terrorist activity and organization. France's foreign minister rejected Israel's demand. He said, if Israel returns to Lebanon, it means Lebanon isn't strong country. Well, that's the point. Lebanon isn't a strong country. Lebanon is a country occupied by Iran via its terror army Hezbollah. Hezbollah's army is more powerful than Lebanon's army. Hezbollah uses Lebanon as a base for murdering people in Israel and in Lebanon. Hezbollah murders anyone in Lebanon who they see as a threat to their control. In 2005, Hezbollah assassinated Lebanon's former Prime Minister Rafik al-Hariri. Israel cannot return to the reality that existed on October 8, 2023. That's when Hezbollah joined Hamas's attack. Israel wasn't in Lebanon then. That's why Hezbollah was able to fire over 15,000 Iranian rockets, missiles, and drones. That's why 60,000 people in Israel had to flee their homes. That's why Hezbollah has been able to aim guided missiles at houses. France didn't protect Hariri or the people in Lebanon from Hezbollah. No one did. France did nothing to protect the people of Israel from Hezbollah. No one pushed Hezbollah away from Israel's border. That's why Israel is doing it now. The people of Lebanon dream of a future without war. They know that Hezbollah must disarm. But Israel can't leave Lebanon unless we know that Hezbollah won't be back. Israel's people are under attack from Iran's Hezbollah terror. So are, so are the people of Lebanon. Tomorrow needs to be won without Iranian control of Lebanon for the sake of both countries. I just saw an incredible video. Israel's troops were about to engage Hezbollah terrorists. Then, UN forces in Lebanon approached in trucks. The Israeli soldiers were shocked to see them. They asked the UN soldiers, who sent you here? Who sent you here now? An Israeli news crew embedded within the Israeli soldiers caught that bizarre encounter on camera. The Israeli soldiers warned the UN forces that the area was dangerous and there was shooting. So the UN forces left. One of the Israeli soldiers shared that when, we, when he was younger, he remembered the UN forces in Lebanon doing the same thing. When Israel's troops would be closing in on Hezbollah, the UN troops would suddenly appear. That's no coincidence. UN forces in Lebanon are part of the problem, not part of the solution. The UN forces are known as UNIFIL, the United Nations Interim Forces in Lebanon. UNIFIL is another UN agency that hasn't done its job. Quite the opposite. UNIFIL was supposed to prevent Hezbollah from being armed, from being near Israel's border, and certainly from firing at people in Israel. Instead, UNIFIL looked, at, uh, instead, UNIFIL looked on as Hezbollah became stronger in Lebanon, right next to UNIFIL bases. And UNIFIL did nothing to stop Hezbollah's over 15,000 Iranian rockets, missiles, and drones. That's why Hezbollah has been able to wage war for so long. The UN has always done nothing. Now, let's take some questions from our audience watching live on social media. Thank you, Jonathan. This is a question we received from X. There's a video circulating online showing an Israeli airstrike near the international airport in Beirut, Lebanon. How do you justify this with the claim that Israel is doing everything in its power to avoid civilian casualties? Well, this, is, this, is, this video basically proves that Israel is doing everything in its power in order to prevent civilian casualties in Lebanon. Because Israel sends warnings through its uh, um, uh, Arabic uh, um, spokesman to tell people in specific areas to evacuate in order not to be harmed when Israel is striking a building that belongs to Hezbollah or being operated by Hezbollah uh, terrorists. That video just proves that life continues in Lebanon and civilians that aren't part of Hezbollah will not be harmed. 
That's what Israel has been doing since it began its operation in Lebanon, making sure that none of the Lebanese civilians that aren't part of any terrorist group wouldn't be harmed. And Israel is continuing to do that. We can see numerous videos of people just waiting to see an Israeli strike going on of a building that is, belongs to Hezbollah, and people are not getting harmed. They're just watching there, standing, and also filming it. This is the proof that Israel is doing everything in its power to prevent Lebanese casualties. A few minutes ago, Israeli airstrikes were reported in Damascus. What are your thoughts on this report? Is there a connection between what's happening in Lebanon and what's happening in Syria? Thank you for this amazing question, because it goes on beyond saying that Syria has been part of the problem. Syria is the base, is the hub for Hezbollah to transfer weapons from the Islamic Republic of Iran to Hezbollah in Lebanon through Syria. We have seen numerous times where Syria just let it happen and go over to Lebanon. Israel is doing everything in its power in order to prevent Hezbollah from the, regain its powers again, to regain missiles that are being sent from Iran, to regain powers by uh, getting drones that are sent by the Islamic Republic of Iran. And Israel has every right to protect its citizens. That's its only job to do right now, to protect us Israeli civilians. And uh, Syria is definitely part of the problem. That's why Israel has to make sure that Syria would stop giving weapons to Hezbollah. This is a question we received from YouTube. The IDF said this morning that 15 trucks of aid from the UAE entered northern Gaza. Is Israel still cooperating with the UAE? What's the relationship like between Israel and the UAE today? That's a great question because it just shows that Israel is continuing to support and want peace in the region. When Israel did the Abraham Accords, it did it of a good faith that it wanted quiet and prosperity in this region. The UAE continued to have that peace agreement, although Israel was under attack and is continuing, continuously uh, responding back against terrorists and eliminating them. The UAE has proved itself that it's a really important ally. One, it could really help out in the day after when, when the war ends, but also, as right now, it basically shows that Israel and the UAE are still having good relationships because Israel is letting the UAE bring uh, support and supplies to Gaza, both through air, we have seen it numerous times, but also uh, through um, um, the border with Israel. And that's something that is really important. Israel is looking to expand the Abraham Accords. We've seen Bahrain uh, joining after the UAE announced they're going to uh, sign a, a peace agreement and normalization with Israel, also Morocco, also Sudan, and hopefully that in the near future, and this is my personal dream as a Lebanese, as a former Lebanese citizen, to see also Lebanon being part of the Heb Abraham Accords 2.0. This is what we need in this area. This is what we need in this region. We are sick of wars. We don't want to be able to live every day as if it's our last day because a missile might hit us uh, by Hezbollah terrorists. And that's why this cooperative in the Middle East that is being done by Israel and other Arabic countries, other Muslim countries, just proves that we're able to have peace only if we sit down together and negotiate with each other. And that's what we need to have also with Lebanon. Thank you, Jonathan. This is our final question. Now that you've joined the Israeli Citizen Spokesperson's Office, what's next for you? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I'm single, so if, <laughs> if you have anyone uh, to share. Um, basically, I see myself as a bridge between communities. I'm Lebanese, I'm Israeli, I'm Christian, I'm part of the LGBTQ plus community. And this is something that I've dedicated my life in order to become a voice for people that are afraid to speak out, both in Israel and both abroad, spe especially inside of Lebanon, that just want to be live and let live. That's something that I really hope to expand in the future. I'm really uh, working on bringing more collaborations with Lebanese people and Israelis and people from around the world um, to just share our thoughts and, and give platform to people that just want to spread joy and peace. And this is uh, where I'm heading. Hopefully uh, we will be successful. And this is something that I'm really looking forward to expand. And I'm really happy to be part officially of the family of Israel's uh, spokesman's office. It's a really true honor, and I want to thank you very much for watching us. 
Um, we'd also like to announce that we have a new Spanish language channel. Uh, it, the links are going to be in the description and our platforms. Um, that's all we have time for today. Thank you for tuning in. We'll be back tomorrow at 3 p.m. Israel time and 8 a.m. East Coast time. Have a good day. Bye.